Today, I'm going to explain a crime thriller film called, The Disappearance of Alice Creed. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Ex convicts Vic Ex and Danny prepare Vic. for a job, which is kidnapping Alice Creed. They start with stealing a van and buying supplies like a drill, cord, saw, and mats. Then, they turn a room in an apartment building into their holding facility. All the furniture is replaced, thick mats are put on the walls and floors, and the windows are drilled with wood. They even buy a new bed and carefully assemble it, making some improvements by adding a tool that will hold the cords. Danny changes the lock on the door, then adds a few more. Vic and Danny also personalize the van by putting some thick sheets of plastic inside to make it easier for them to clean, then add a small curved pipe that can be used to hold a person in one place. After packing, changing into their suits, and dumping their trash on the street, they finally wait outside for Alice. Vic and Danny carry Alice inside the van, then lock her handcuffs on the curved pipe before binding her feet with duct tape. With a bag of cloth over her head, there isn't much Alice can do or see, and it isn't long before she's taken to the room that Vic and Danny have prepared. Alice struggles and screams when the men tie her to the bed and remove her clothes by cutting them. Danny stares at Alice as she lies on the bed naked, while Vic goes out to get a newspaper and uses it to cover Alice's private parts before taking a photo of her, making sure that her small tattoo is seen. Keeping their masks on, they remove the cover from Alice's head, revealing the ball gag on her mouth. Ignoring Alice's sobs, the men take more pictures of her before covering her head again and leaving her in the dark. Outside, Vic and Danny change clothes, and when they go back to check on Alice, they put on her underwear before dressing her in a hoodie and sweatpants. They even place a small pillow under her head. With that, they leave her in the dark, locking her inside again. Danny watches Vic as he checks Alice's naked pictures to save them in a hard drive. Later, Danny asks him if he sent the email and pictures to Alice's father, and Vic replies that he did. They then go back to Alice's room and inform her that they need to keep her hydrated. Vic tells her that they'll remove her gag so she can drink, then begs her not to shout since they don't want to hurt or kill her. However, Vic warns Alice that they're prepared to do either or both of those things if they need to. When Vic removes her gag, Alice begs him to let her go, saying she has a daughter who needs her. Ignoring her pleas, Vic covers her mouth and tells her they know everything about her, including the fact that she doesn't have a daughter. As Vic talks, Alice suddenly bites his hand, and when he pulls back, Vic slaps her while Danny looks away. He then puts pressure on her neck, urging her to just listen to them and do as they say. When Alice agrees, Vic finally lets her drink from a bottle and puts the ball gag back in her mouth. He also teaches her a hand signal that she can use to tell them she needs to go to the bathroom. Vic reminds her to hold it in and wait for them to come, adding that they won't change her sheets and clothes if she soils them. During dinner, Vic gets mad at Danny for refusing to eat and insists that they need to keep their energy. However, Danny is adamant that he isn't hungry. Pissed, Vic shoves food in Danny's mouth, saying that if he doesn't feel hungry after 9 hours of not eating anything, then something's not right. Vic tells him not to overthink this, especially about whether they're treating Alice right or not. Vic reminds him that they're too far along to stop, and when Danny comes to his senses, he finally starts eating. Vic then instructs him to check on Alice, and when he does, Alice gives him the signal that she needs to pee. Danny brings in a bedpan, pulls down her pants, and lets her do her business. Humiliated, Alice cries as she pees while the man just coldly watch her. Once she's done, Danny pulls up her pants while Vic covers her head. As Vic prepares to leave, Danny reminds him to be careful and dump the phone. This irritates Vic, and he retorts that he's not stupid before reminding Danny not to drink while watching Alice. When he's gone, Danny looks at Alice's naked photos on the laptop, making him feel guilty and uncomfortable. He then checks on Alice and hovers above her with the desire to feel her skin, but he manages to restrain himself. However, Alice suddenly jolts, and when Danny accidentally touches her, he hurriedly leaves the room and walks away. When Vic comes back, he informs Danny that he's made the call to Alice's father. Her father agreed to pay, but while they were talking, Vic heard a click, which meant that the cops were listening to their conversation. This makes Danny panic, but Vic calms him down, assuring him that he got rid of the phone he used to make the call. He also informs Danny that Alice's father wanted to speak with her to make sure that she's still alive, but Vic said no since he knew that he was just stalling so the cops could trace the call. This does nothing to suit Danny's nerves, but Vic guarantees him that Alice's father will get the money in the morning, adding that they need to make sure that he gets the money from the bank as soon and as fast as he can. While pointing a gun at Alice, Vic tells her that they're going to untie her, and once they do, they want Alice to sit on the edge of the bed and stay still. Once Danny unties her and removes her gag, Vic instructs her to look in the camera and talk to her father. He orders her to tell her father to pay the ransom money and do exactly as they say, or they will kill her. When Vic starts recording, an exhausted Alice starts speaking to the camera as if she's speaking to her father, telling him how and where she was taken and that she doesn't know where she is. Irritated, Vic stops recording and tells her he doesn't want her to give a narrative but to go straight to the point that if her father doesn't pay, they will kill her. Seeing that Alice isn't scared enough, Vic asks Danny to give her some motivation. Danny hesitates for a bit, but he pulls himself together and puts a knife to Alice's throat, frightening her. Vic starts recording again, and as she tries to hold back her tears, Alice finally does as she's told. However, Alice fails to contain herself and sobs as she pleads with her father to do as the kidnappers say, adding that she wants to come home. Danny then starts gagging and binding her again, but she protests, saying she won't cry and her arms hurt. Vic then lets her move her arms around, and once she feels a bit better, he had Danny tie her up. Upon reviewing Alice's video, Vic saves it, commenting that she's a good find. Vic then reminds Danny not to sleep, then gives him some medicine to keep himself awake before leaving. Alice gives Danny the bathroom alert when he checks on her, but when he gets the bedpan and starts pulling down Alice's pants, she tells him she needs to do the number two. Hesitant to take Alice to the bathroom, Danny fetches a bucket and toilet paper and unties Alice, but he leaves her right hand cuffed to the bed. 
Finally, he signals her to do her business. Frustrated, Alice sits on the bucket before pointing to the ball gag in her mouth, asking Danny to take it off. She tries reasoning that she can't go with him watching her and begs him to leave. Danny shakes his head and points his gun at Alice, but he changes his mind and turns his back on her instead. Seeing Danny's weapon, Alice slowly stands and pulls up her pants. With her free hand, she hits Danny on the head with the bucket and tries going for his gun, but Danny quickly manages to pin her against the wall. Alice then bites Danny's hand and kicks him in the groin, and once Danny's down, Alice threatens him with the gun and demands him let her go. While asking for the keys to her cuffs, Alice accidentally fires the gun, scaring Danny. Finally, he reveals himself to Alice, and she gets the shock of her life when she discovers that he's her boyfriend. Danny explains that since Alice is always talking about how much she hates her father, they've decided to get money from her. As Alice gets confused, Danny tries convincing her that he's kidnapped her for their sake. Unsatisfied with Danny's answer, Alice shouts that he's humiliated her in front of a stranger. Danny then tells her that Vic is someone he met in prison and that Vic doesn't know about their relationship. Vic thinks she's just some random rich girl, and he has no idea that Danny will betray him. With the gun still pointed at Danny, Alice asks him why he didn't tell her about his plan, saying she thought she died. Danny tries telling her that it had to look real or Vic will be suspicious, but Alice gets tired of listening to his explanation. When she asks how much her father is paying, Danny informs her that he's agreed to pay $2 million in cash. He adds that all she had to do is lie down in bed, but Alice remains unconvinced. Vic then arrives and starts knocking on the door, so Danny begs Alice to give him the gun back, or Vic will kill them both. With no other choice, Alice asks Danny not to let Vic hurt her before finally dropping the gun. He ties her back to bed, and as he's about to gag her, she makes him promise that he'll keep his end of the bargain. With that, the teeth kiss. Danny then locks the rooms and cleans up in the bathroom before answering the door, and when Vic comes inside, he demands to know where Danny was. Danny replies that Alice was just relieving herself in the bathroom, and Vic believes him. After Danny learns that Alice's father has seen her video, Vic informs him that they'll be doing the exchange the following day. Vic then tells Danny to get some sleep since they have a big day ahead, and Danny doesn't even protest. The following morning, Vic and Danny wake up late. While Vic feeds Alice, she and Danny notice the bullet casing from when Alice accidentally fired the gun the previous night. Danny moves to the other side of the room to pick it up, but Vic immediately notices and orders him to get back to his position. After feeding Alice, Vic stands and accidentally drops the bowl and the spoon on the ground, right where the casing is. Without thinking, Danny rushes to pick up the spoon and casing, and when Vic asks for the spoon back, Danny gives it to him but manages to hide the casing in his hand before putting it in his pocket. After locking Alice in, Vic asks Danny if he's fine, and he replies that he is. Vic then reminds him to focus on their task, insisting that he can't do it without Danny. When Danny goes to the bathroom to pee, he decides to flush the casing in the toilet. Unfortunately, it doesn't go all the way in, so Danny has to keep flushing the toilet until Vic notices it and starts working. Vic demands Danny to open the door, but Danny is busy looking for a place where he can hide the casing. When Vic threatens to kick the door open, Danny just swallows the casing and tells Vic the toilet was clogged, but he's managed to fix it. Although he's initially suspicious, Vic believes Danny but tells him to quit goofing around. In the living room, Vic reminds Danny that they're nearly done, and in two days, they'll be on the other side of the world. Vic tells Danny that it will be just the two of them, and even though they won't be able to go out that much during the first two weeks, they at least have each other. The two then start kissing each other passionately as if they've been lovers for a long time, and when they break the kiss, Vic tells Danny he has to go since the bank is about to open. As Vic leaves, Danny locks the door and goes to Alice's room. Danny informs Alice that Vic has left to get the money from her father, so Alice asks Danny to untie her. Danny is a little hesitant and jumpy, but Alice says he can trust her like she trusted him. As Danny massages Alice's foot after untying her, Alice asks him how he got Vic to pick her. Danny explains she fits Vic's criteria and that he's been planning a kidnapping since he was still in jail. When Vic got out, he contacted Danny, and Danny says he didn't have to look far for the truck. He then says Vic is arranging the exchange near the river, and they will drive Alice nearby where her father can't find her. Once Vic is getting the money, Danny will let Alice go. However, Alice is worried that Vic will just steal the money, but Danny assures her that he won't. And when Vic has the money, Danny says he will take it from him and meet up with her. Still unconvinced that Danny's plan will work, Alice tells Danny she's scared before seducing him. They start kissing and undressing each other, and when Alice manages to get on top of Danny, she suddenly cuffs him to the bed. Before Alice could cuff his other hand, Danny throws her on the floor, demanding to tell him what she's doing. Alice gets dressed and snaps at him, saying she won't just sit around after he kidnapped her. At this point, Danny is completely naked as he tries to break free from his cuff. He tells Alice that they had a plan, but Alice is having none of it. As Alice leaves the room, she finds the front door locked from the inside. She then sees a mobile phone on the table, and when she calls 999, she informs the operator that she's been kidnapped but doesn't know where she is. Alice starts to panic, asking the operator to come and get her fast before Vic comes back. When she notices the gun on the table, she uses it to threaten Danny into giving her the keys. He then tells her that they're in his right hand pocket, and as Alice is about to get them, she orders Danny to get back to bed. After retrieving the keys, Danny suddenly kicks Alice's hand and slaps her heart, causing her to lose balance. Danny picks up the gun and points it at her before placing his foot on Alice's throat, demanding that she return the keys. Once Alice throws them to him, Danny puts pressure on her throat until she passes out. Finally, he removes his cuff and ties Alice back to bed before going to the bathroom to vomit. Danny starts to laugh and cry when he accidentally threw up the bullet casing, and once he calms down, Vic arrives. Vic informs Danny that Alice's father already has the money and is just waiting for the location. They just have to move Alice to the warehouse and wait for the exchange. However, when they go to check on Alice, she won't wake up. 
Frightened, Vic asks Danny what he did, but Danny denies doing anything. Vic then gets a small bottle of ammonia and lets Alice inhale it, and once she's awake, Danny tells Vic to calm down, assuring him that their hostage is fine. In the living room, Vic orders Danny to prepare the band. As he does, Vic tries putting the ball gag back in Alice's mouth, but he gets shocked when the phone slips out from her pocket. Angry, Vic places his hand on Alice's throat as he questions how she got the phone. He then checks it and sees that Alice has called the cops, making him even mad. Vic gets on top of Alice and repeatedly slaps her, demanding to know how she got it. Alice starts to bleed, and when Vic takes out a small knife, Alice calls to Danny for help. Confused as to how Alice knew Danny's name, Vic asks her if they knew each other. However, Alice lies and says Danny just told her his name. With Vic pacing around the room, he accidentally finds the bullet lodged on the wall. Once again, he demands to know what really happened there, threatening that she'll never see her family again if she doesn't tell him. Alice admits to firing the gun and explains how she managed to get it from Danny before confessing that Danny plans to betray him. She says Danny has made a deal with her, promising that he'd give her some money if she went along with his plan. Disappointed, Vic sits on the floor while Alice tells him he can betray Danny instead. Vic then asks if she knows his name, and when she says she doesn't, he says she's lying before gagging her again. When Danny comes back, Vic asks him why he proposed Alice to be their victim, and Danny replies that he read about her in the newspaper. Vic claims that something isn't right and that Alice is acting funny, which makes Danny feel uneasy. He asks Vic what Alice said, but Vic replies that she didn't say anything. Vic then asks Danny to come to him, only to put a gun to his head. He wants Danny to say he loves him, so Danny does. The men sedate Alice, and once she's unconscious, they remove their mask, untie her, and wrap her in a blanket. They then take Alice to the van and remove the sheet before finally going to the warehouse, where they cuff her in another room. Vic asks for Danny's set of keys and tells him they'll get the money together. Surprised by the sudden change of plans, Danny insists on staying with Alice as a lookout, but Vic tells him he needs him in case things go sideways. Defeated, Danny goes with Vic to the forest, and he says that the money is there. Vic shows Danny a hole where he can get the money, but when Danny goes to take it, he calls Vic and shows him that it's empty. Vic then admits that the money was never there. The hole is for him because he messed up. Danny begs for his life, and when Vic asks if Danny told Alice his name, Danny replies that he only told her his first name and that they met in prison. Danny then tries getting Vic's sympathy by recounting how Vic protected him when they first met, and as Vic gets distracted, Danny lunges at him and runs. Vic fires at Danny but misses, so he chases him through the woods. Taking a better aim this time, Vic shoots Danny and hits him in the back. He walks to where he saw Danny fell, but he isn't there. Vic then continues searching for his traitor of a partner while Danny hides behind a tree. As Alice wakes up in the warehouse, Vic gets the money and puts it in his getaway car before burning the van. He then returns to the warehouse and puts a mask on before trying to inject Alice with something, but Danny shows up and kicks him. Danny points the gun at Vic, who pretends to be nice and even offers to take Danny to the hospital. Removing his mask, Vic attempts to convince Danny to let him help with his wound. Instead, he removes Alice's gag and asks for Vic's keys, but Vic says he knows Danny loves him. Vic then reveals to Alice that he and Danny are together, saying that Danny loves him again and again. As Alice cries and watches Vic ask for the gun, Danny shoots him without warning. Danny then takes the keys from Vic, and instead of letting Alice go, he just smirks and tells her that she should have listened to him before walking away. Alice begs Danny to come back, but he only ignores her. However, Alice realizes that Vic is still alive, and though he's already weak, Vic manages to toss the keys close to him. Meanwhile, Danny drives away with the ransom money. With effort, Alice successfully reaches the keys using her foot, and after removing her cuffs, she finds her way out of the warehouse. With no other choice but to walk home, Alice starts her way down the road, where she sees Danny's car. Alice finds Danny's dead body inside, so she pulls him out of the vehicle and gets in. She then changes the music and sobs, and when she sees the money in the passenger seat, Alice starts to